one of the hardest songs in the world to explain is Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. And you probably didn't even know that the song was by Leonard Cohen until this video, right? Obviously some of you did. And honestly, there's probably a lot of things that most people don't know about Hallelujah. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because I'm going to explain them to you, but it's a really deep and interesting song that's worth understanding. Let me explain. Hey everybody, I'm Clifford Summy, the pop song professor, and welcome to my channel where we make English class awesome by explaining and sometimes roasting song lyrics on school days. And today we're talking about Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Now, this is a remake video because I have explained Hallelujah before, but the editing was awful and it like gives people headaches to watch. I'll have the link in the description if you want to suffer, but for some reason it's the most viewed video on my channel. How embarrassing, right? So here we are. And let's just rip off that band-aid. We have Leonard Cohen as saying, it explains that many kinds of hallelujahs do exist and all the perfect and broken hallelujahs have equal value. Yep, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. That's basically it. Hallelujah is about many things, but a large portion of it is understanding what your hallelujah is and how to express it and why you should even express it. Obviously the choruses are just hallelujah, 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 and those continue on and on and on, but the verses tell stories that lead into giving those hallelujahs. And to make this just a touch more complicated, Leonard Cohen actually wrote over 80 different verses and would switch up which ones he would use at different performances. And even the covers that you listen to have different verses chosen for different covers. Add on to that the fact that the way that people sing the song significantly changes the meaning of the song. You know, is it mournful? Is it rejoiceful? Is it just kind of like putting it out there and letting people take it as it is? Hallelujah can mean a lot of different things based on how you say it. At the heart of it, hallelujah is a Hebrew word used to praise God. But in this case, Leonard Cohen refers to his song as the secular hallelujah. So while God is mentioned a lot and the Bible is as well, it's not necessarily to God, it's more about the human side of the hallelujah saying. So a good question to keep in mind as you're listening to the song yourself is why are these people saying hallelujah and what inspires them to do so? Keep in mind too that this song is widely open for interpretation. There are as many interpretations as there are people who listen to it. And Leonard Cohen also wasn't the kind of guy apparently who wrote a song that was like A to B to C. Oh, you made it. That's what the song is all about. It's more of like a snapshot of different pictures of life and you just kind of have to take the pictures for what they are. So like in verse one, we hear, now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? King David is making music, secret music that pleases a God, but the person that Leonard Cohen's talking to doesn't really care for music even. Well, why are you listening to the song in the first place? On one hand, this maybe is evidence that everybody's hallelujah is a little bit different and some people's hallelujah doesn't involve secret chords played to the Lord. On the other hand, it alludes to a story or a personal relationship that he never really finishes the story for and doesn't give context for. But the verse ends the baffled king composing hallelujah. He's trying to create his hallelujah. And in this case, Leonard's saying that for King David, his hallelujah was to God and it had to do with music. We get into verse two and it's your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from from your lips, she drew the hallelujah. So for some people, their hallelujah is being a peeping Tom. Well, he's really alluding to both the story of King David seeing Bathsheba getting her husband killed and making her his wife and connecting that to the story of Samson who was superhumanly strong. This girl named Delilah tricked him into giving her his secret for his strength, which was his long hair. And so she cut his hair and then he kind of lost his superpowers. But even despite all of that fallen nature and and losing at life, they still say the hallelujah. Is that because their life was so great at that moment? No, but it's because they're trying to find hallelujah in the midst of their circumstances, their mistakes, their brokenness. Verse three is really, really good. I love verse three. Baby, I've been here before. I know this room. I've walked to this floor. I used to live alone before I knew you. I've seen your flag on the marble arch. Love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. And so maybe this girl is trying to like win at love. Maybe she's a very dominant personality and he's a little bit more laid back and he's saying, 
love isn't about winning. You can't win at love. And I think that's probably fair because when you try to win at love, it gets a little bit aggressive and maybe becomes a little bit more about yourself. Love is not a victory march. It's not this grand royal thing. No, it's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Loving other people is difficult. He tells us in a later verse, it's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Man, Leonard Cohen seems kind of depressed. Or maybe he's right. Maybe that hallelujah, that finding that moment, that, that test where we see, does this person really have a hallelujah in their heart, comes not in those moments when hallelujahs are being shoved at us, the victory marches, seeing the light, relationships that are working out really, really well. Maybe the test of our hallelujah is when we're baffled, when we're tied to the kitchen chair, when we're cold and when we're broken. And in a slightly less well-known verse, we hear, and even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of Song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. He doesn't make clear who the Lord of Song is, but he does say, whatever this life throws at me, I'm going to end it with a hallelujah. In the end, hallelujah is about finding your hallelujah no matter what the circumstances are. It's a song you can sing no matter where you're at. And I think that it's a beautiful backdrop for humans who are trying to find their hallelujah, their joy, their reason for living, no matter where they're at. Guys, that's Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. I hope that you enjoyed this explanation. I'd love to hear your thoughts or what the song means to you down below in the comments. Also down below in the description, you can check out my community of song explainers and song writers. I would love for you, personally to join. Don't forget to check out these videos right here and I'll talk to you guys next time.